Hi, fourth grade. Today's the day. We're going to be using our perspective skills to make our very own city. I hope you've been thinking about what you want to include in your city, whether it be like a GameStop or certain restaurants. I'm also going to include some additional videos for those who are super advanced or want to do an eagle view city like this, where it's top down and you can see the roads. So you can do it the way we did it last time or this new way. Hi, guys. So today we're going to be doing our perspective cities. I know some of you were a little bit nervous last time, or maybe you just got the hang of it, or maybe you're an expert. I'm gonna go over these one more time. There are gonna be a couple steps I'm gonna do with you, and then I'm gonna do the whole perspective by myself just so you can watch. But don't worry, if you don't get it, I'm actually gonna embed this video and some others online so that you can watch it today on your own if you need help. And that way you don't have to ask me, you can just go find the video. All right, but before we begin, I want you to make sure your paper is horizontal. This is going to be our final draft, our final paper that you are going to be turning in via your portfolio so I can see it this weekend. At the very bottom, I need you to write your name. So whatever your name is, I'm going to write Mr. Boatfield because that's my name. Left side, your name. Right side is going to be your class code. I'm going to give you your class code now, but give me a thumbs up when you're ready to move on. Awesome. So remember the first thing you do is you create the horizon. The horizon is the line that goes all the way across the land and it separates the sky from the land. So I'm going to take my ruler. I try to get it right smack dab in the middle of the paper. It splits it into two equal sections. So then I have my horizon. In the middle of the horizon, you put a little dot. That's the vanishing point. Today we're going to be doing cities, so you may want to include a road that goes to the vanishing point. That might be a cool feature. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to decide how long I want my road. Mm, about that long. It really actually doesn't matter to be honest. And I'm going to take my line and go out, do another one, go out. So you can imagine that as a road. You can even put little lines on it to tell us that there's two lanes of traffic. All right, now it's time to do some buildings. I personally, when I'm doing these, unless I'm just kind of experimenting, I like to go from back to front. So let's say I put a building over here. I'm gonna do a little rectangle. And what I mean by going from back to front is that maybe I have buildings in front of other buildings, just like a city has overlapping buildings. This isn't just one tall tower or one short tower. It's a bunch of different size buildings. All right, so I have my shape of the building I want. I have to think about it. Since the horizon stabbed through the middle of it, I'm only gonna see the bottom left right and the top right. So I'm gonna connect those up. Use light lines until you get it right. If you use hard lines, it'll be very hard to erase. Now, right now this building goes into infinity. So you would have to take your vertical ruler and decide where to cut it off with a vertical line. You have to think about it now. What line junk am I going to get rid of? I'm going to get rid of this, get rid of this. Unless your building is invisible, you want to delete the horizon line only inside the building. You're going to still need the horizon line for other things. But let's say you want to put something here because otherwise you're just going to have to fill it up with like rocks and trees or something. Something's going to have to go there. Might as well make it easy for yourself and do another building. You can overlap, so watch me first. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a square building this time, but this time it's gonna go below the horizon. So that means I would see the top of the building. So if I was a giant walking through the city and about to step on all y'all, I would probably see the top of the building too. But this gets confusing because it's like, where does this building start? Where does this building begin? Always just find the vanishing point. Whenever in doubt, find the vanishing point. Make it easy for yourself. I'm always here if you need a little bit of help. I won't be able to do it for you today, but I'm going to sketch it out and find that vanishing point for each one of these three corners. Now you're probably thinking it looks now like it's going through the other building. I mean, if you want it that way, you could keep it, but like always, just find where you want to cut it off. I think I'm going to cut it off right here, make kind of a longer building. So vertical line, but I also have to cut off the, cut off the top horizontal Bam, cut off my line junk, delete, 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 control, alt, delete that stuff. And then I'm going to delete what's inside of the building. So now parts of my original building are gone. 
And so now I have a building in the background and a building that looks like it is in the front. Like always, you can be creative with this. Your buildings do not have to be just blocks. Maybe over here, I want to do a house. So instead of just a square for my house, I might wanna put a roof. Most roofs tend to be triangle. So I could do an interesting triangle shape for my roof, but it works the same way. I would take the corners I know I would see, align them to the vanishing point, including the bottom left of the house. Then I can start cutting it off. Vertical line. If it's gonna be a roof, then you want to mirror this line. So it'd probably look like this if it was realistic at the end of the house. And then of course, delete your line junk. Um, some of you were asking if you can do floating things in the sky. Absolutely. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm obviously looking for a city. I would like mm, three or four different um, buildings. Go for three. If you can do more, awesome, great. Don't forget about the background. Maybe there's a mountain in the background, or maybe there's more buildings in the distance. Maybe there's another city. That could be it. Come up with something for the background. Tell me what time of day it is. Is there a sun? Is there a moon? Don't worry about color. I do want you to think about details like the windows. A trick for the windows. Let's say I wanna put a window here and I want it to look real. Decide how tall you want the window. Put a dot at each end of the window. Take the ruler. Draw light vanishing lines from that window. And then just like a building, cut it off. Erase your line junk. And then you can start decorating the window and the window will actually align the way it would in real life. And of course you can do doors. This does not have to be a realistic city. Mine's kind of cuckoo crazy. You can do a little house, a little pathway, a little driveway. You can do cars driving by, people. Next, I want you to worry about Sharpie. Use that Sharpie today. We won't have time to get to color, but I do expect you to Sharpie the lines that you have. Now, if you notice, there's some lines I'm not going over because I never drew them with the pencil. I realize it would probably be a big pain to draw everything and then go over a Sharpie. So when you're doing your Sharpie, if you wanna add some extra details that weren't there before, that's fine. Okay, so here's what mine looks like. This is all I expect you to get to is probably pencil and Sharpie. Please don't go on to um, coloring. It's not gonna be necessary today. We may not even have time. This is kind of a long project. But don't forget to go over it with Sharpie. Once you've done that, um, we can move on to turning it in, which I will go over now. But before we do that, let's talk about your resources. If you today. could please go ahead and open your Chromebook. I want you to go to the fourth grade Google website, whatever, and give me a thumbs up. Awesome. Next, I want you to go to classwork. We are on week eight perspective cities. Go ahead and press view assignment and it should look like this. Give me a thumbs up. Today, you will need to turn in a photo of your work, and I will show you how to do that at the end of class so that you're not like, you know, overwhelmed with instructions. We're gonna do that together at the same time. If you don't finish today, it's okay. You get 100 whether you were done Sharpie or not. It truly doesn't matter. Before we turn it in and talk about turning it in and get this stuff done, go to the one, two, three slide, click it open, and give me a thumbs up. This week, if you look under number one, I've given you some resources if you just can't figure it out or you number want some one help. on the one, two, three slide. I have a video that can help you with a basic city. Um, this one is not me, so I don't know who made this, but it was helpful. I also have two additional videos that I have created. So let's say you're a more advanced and you, or maybe you just want to try out some new, new and different things. I have a tutorial on how to do this. You don't have to copy it exactly. In fact, there are no words in it. So if you play it, you can make it big and you can learn how to do this little city. And if you're lost today, just watch one of these. There's no words to it. This just might help you. Also, if you're one of those people who really gets it, and I've told you if you were, you know, 
pretty get talented and gifted at doing the perspective, you can click the Eagle View Advanced Difficulty. So this one's different because at the very end, it will look like you are looking down like an eagle into the city. And it shows you how to do that if that's what you're interested in. So if you're more interested in doing a top-down view of a city with streets and stuff, this can be for you, but I'm letting you know right now it's probably expert level. I'm going to pause this video, play some music. At the very end, we'll go over how to take a photo of your work and turn it in. Okay, it is now time to turn in what we have. Remember, this is going to be our first grade for the second nine weeks, so I wanna make sure that you are listening and doing this with me. If you could, please go to week eight, Perspective Cities, view assignment, and then give me a thumbs up. Okay, so before you press the plus button, you're going to take your finger, swipe up, just like an iPhone, and you are going to press the camera app. What's different about the camera app than like taking a photo on our portfolio is that you get the timer button. So I click the timer and it now says three. That means when I press this camera button, it's gonna count to three, which gives me enough time to let my hands free, take a picture of my artwork, get a good photo, and then I can turn it in and I'll show you how. I'm gonna press this little button, take a picture, and I'll be right back. So I took a photo and luckily I made it in time for the three seconds and now I have a photo without my face or my hands and it's a little bit better than the crazy photos that we have to take with two hands. All right, I'm gonna click X on this camera. We don't need any more. You're gonna press the plus button. Now watch carefully, people get confused. You're not gonna go to Google Drive. You're not gonna go to Link. You're gonna go to File. It's actually been saved on the computer, not the internet. People get a little bit confused here. Um, when it says, even though we hit File, it's still going to Google Drive. You're gonna press Upload. There's gonna be nothing, so press Browse. On your computer, under Downloads, you should see the image you just took. So if you look at the time, this one is the nearest one at the top because it says today at 6.12. Whatever the nearest one that you've taken should be at the top. Double click it. It's loading. Watch it as it loads because you should want to double check this. I'm going to click the IMG just once and double check and make sure that I upload the right video. I don't want your like math homework turned into art. That would make sense. And then you get to press the magic button of turn in. Bam. And then if you can see unsubmit and then there's an image there, it means you've gotten 100. Congratulations. We may now put away our supplies. You can close your Chromebook and close all of the apps you don't, or not the apps, the tabs you don't need them anymore. Have a wonderful day.